Check, check. You good? Yeah, I'm straight, homeboy. You good, Ivan? Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Right, let's silence everyone their phones, please. Si me llama mi mamá, no le contesten, eh? Atos to Life podcast, baby. We're yes, yes, if you if, if you watch this and you watch the progression, the growth, it's been a it's been a journey. It's been yeah, definitely it's been a dope ass journey, bro. Sometimes I want to fire you. Sometimes you want to fire me. But I don't. I don't want to fire. I want to fight you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Together forever, fool for life. But you know our podcast is usually based on the amazing guests that we have on. Mm -hmm. Today we traveled a little bit. We're not in our usual LA spot. Definitely not. But. We're sitting with this guy, entrepreneur, from nothing to something, failed, succeeded, failed again, and still did it. He kept going back, took the punches of what life was, and right now he's making noise. And you you have pretty much, I think everybody has already ate at, at one of these restaurants. Definitely. Not you just have, one restaurant. You're having, you're doing something wrong. Not just one. Not just two. Oh, no. Son tres, güey. No mames. But the owner of Tacos and Mas Cantina, mm -hmm. the Blue Burro. Yes, sir. But the most, a prolific one and a famous one, man. The Buffalo Spot. But we have Mr. Ivan Flores in the house, baby. Oh. But technically, we're in his house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so, compórtate. Compórtate. No vas a desmadre, güey. How you doing, bro? I'm doing great, bro. How you guys doing? Man, we live in life. How was the drive? Actually, not that bad. I think everybody's still recovering from a crazy weekend, so not a lot of traffic. No? I mean, we were quiet the whole time. We're just... <laughs> nah, <I'm> just <laughs> nah, but we've been good, man. I mean, the, life is always going to throw the ups and downs. You're going to have some good days and bad days, but I think if you keep on going and you look forward to the following day, you can't complain when you wake up. That's right. You bro. at least got to wake up. It's a blessing to wake up, man. Every yeah. day above ground. Everything. Exactly. Right. There you go. Right. But you are one of... One of the ones that can really talk about from nothing to something, from having bad days to having some good days and great days, because you're not, you're a business owner, but everybody sees this, how we always say it, everybody sees the result, but no one sees the hard work it took to even get started. No one sees the failures. And if we can just talk a little bit about that, take a little bit back. Where did you grow up in? Where were you born? Yeah. So for our audience and your audience that doesn't know, Right. Where were, you, where were you born? Well, I grew up in San Isidro, right on the border of Tijuana, Baja California. So I ended up growing up in both sides, right? Um, uh, we were in Tijuana part of the time and then in San Isidro the other time. So my mom, she ended up having to cross the border. My dad ended up leaving her with four of us, right? She was pregnant from me, right? So she had to cross the border, uh, Section 8 welfare, and that was kind of how I grew up. But I also saw the part of growing up in the rancho in Tijuana when mm -hmm. TJ was a whole different level, right? Yeah. So, so that's kind of my childhood, right? Um, I grew up in both both sides, and um, I was very blessed to have such a an awesome mom because she played both roles as a father figure and as a mom. She was very tough with us, obviously, four boys, right? Yeah. So, so that was my childhood. We grew up in Section A. We grew up in the streets, uh, gang around the gangs, around the, the drug dealers, polleros, narcos. That was just what we saw as kids, right? Yeah. But um, even though we were, um, I won't say poor because or, you know, it's a mentality. I guess it's more like a bro, right? Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think I had the best childhood every, any kid can ever have, right? Um, we had a big bondage between me and my older brothers. I was the youngest one. Um, and um, they were always defending me. Obviously, my older brother played the role as the father to me, right? So, because my mom had to work, etc. Yeah. But uh, that was my childhood. We grew up in the streets, fighting, playing soccer, ditching school, um, we kind of took care of each other and then other kids that didn't have their father around, just their mom, their moms were working. So we made like a click, right? We were not gang members, but we were, we had a strong 
uh, uh, unit between us in the apartment. So. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, well, yeah, I, dude. That's that's very important. Like growing up in in yeah. like an apartment complex. I grew up in a comp- yeah. uh, apartment yeah. complex, and you always have the little the little click, like you say. Yeah. It's just you guys learn off of each other. And I mean, my dad was always working. My mom had a, uh, another job too because we had to right. obviously pay rent and everything. And I was always on and about. Like I, I obviously didn't did school, but after school. I wouldn't even go home. I will just go with my friends, ride skateboards. There's a little church right there by the house, and we'll just <laughs> we'll do kid stuff, you know. Yeah. And I feel like you learn a lot from that. You learn a lot from your surroundings, especially as a, as a young, mm-hmm. as growing up, like in if, the hood. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like if if you grew up in any sort of a uh, apartment complex, you know you're you're bonding with these other kids, and it and it starts with playing tag, playing freeze tag, cops and robbers, cops, cops and robbers. <laughs> Um, all those like childhood memories that it becomes a commodity of who who you're around with, and and it's crazy to see when life progresses the journeys that you have when you get into junior high, you get into high school. You know, you make a choice as yeah. without really knowing when you get into high school, you make a choice. That's right. You're gonna go with the cool kids that are misbehaving, being cool, the the funny kids, or you're gonna go with the nerds. But no one wants to go with the nerds because then you're not, you know, you're not going to be known. You're not going to be liked. And for the longest time, people chased to be liked. I want to fit in. I want to be able to, right. I want to make sure I fit in. And the sad part, the sad and crazy part is some people still carry that into being adults. Oh, yeah. I want to fit in. I want to be liked by everybody. And unfortunately, you cannot be liked by everybody. You cannot make everybody happy. Mm-hmm. But it's just the way life goes. But young as a four, were you as, let's, let's go into high school. In, in high school, what is that, 14, about 14, 15 years old? 14, 15, yeah. Who were you then that's different now? You know, who was I then? I, I was very, um, we call it rebelde as a young kid. I, I was a drug dealer at 14 years old. I made a decision in sixth grade. I made a couple of decisions in sixth grade. I didn't want to go to school. I was going to become the biggest drug dealer. And, and that's, what I, that's the life I grew into, right? And um, in high school, that's what I was doing. I was just going to school to find connections to sell drugs. So I was the, the, the kid that was always getting into trouble, getting searched at school by the sheriffs because of what I was doing, right? Mm-hmm. But I always, I always had a heart for people, and I was always taking care of people, no matter the lifestyle that I chose, right? Yeah. So I was always very respected in school. I was one of the, you could say, popular kids. But um, that's who I was in high school. Dang. And I only went to high school a year because I got my, gr- my wife now, girlfriend at the time, pregnant, so I had to drop out of school by then. What age? Uh, 15. So he was not selling candy at school. He was selling something else. <laughs> exactly. Sheesh. <God. laughs> Damn. Yeah, so at 15, you became a father. At 15, I became a father. I got my girlfriend pregnant. So obviously, I had to find a job, right? Yeah. So I had to drop out of school. I couldn't even find a job because I I didn't I needed to go to school, so I had to go into home studies. But I was failing that because I checked out of the of, uh, um, education system a long time ago. So it was hard for me to progress on it, right? What, to move forward on it. Was that because of your surroundings that you were about? Or like what? At, at that young of an age, I know we're, our brain is still developing. Right. But... What brings you into that type of decision and lifestyle that, you know, I could say for me as a kid, I would I would fear to even get in trouble by my, by my parents. Right. We just put up yesterday, growing up, who are you more scared of, mom or dad? True. Mom was mom was a regulator and dad was just the final boss <laughs> if things got out of hand. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, like, you didn't have your dad present, yeah. but your mom and your older brothers played that role. So what, what, what gets a 13, 14-year-old kid into that type of lifestyle and that type of decision making so young you know so i look at it now as an adult right Mm -hmm. what i went through as a kid you know there's many factors that played into that Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them i actually made a video about that recently is uh each kid i grew up without a father right and as you grow up i never needed a dad or whatever right but in reality you do look for that love somewhere and i looked for it in the streets right with the Mm -hmm. bigger homies my bigger friends i always hung out with older people my brothers did too some men, they have the ego, they don't say that. But now I find out that we, you always need that guidance from that father figure, regardless if you believe in it or not. That was, that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. But growing up, I always knew that I wanted to do business, looking back at it, right? But as a kid, I always felt stupid, right? Because, um, because obviously, 
as you're growing up and um, you go to, you go to school, I flunked first. They held me back in first grade because I didn't know how to speak English. Bro, that was me in kinder. <laughs> yeah, they, they See, held me what, another year in kinder. Yeah, so but what happened to us, we grew up in San Isidro and Tijuana and everybody yeah. spoke Spanish. Yeah. So by the time I got into school, I didn't know English. So yeah. I didn't know, and they decided to help me back. So that affected me through so many years that I didn't tell a lot of people. I didn't tell my mom. I felt stupid at the time, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, so it's embarrassing, that, bro. It's, yeah, it was it, embarrassing to me, to be honest. So that was a big mark in my life at the time. The kids, my friends move on, yeah, and I'm still left behind. They're like, well, the stupid kid, right? But obviously, since we grew up in the streets, a lot of people didn't clown a lot because they would get their ass whooped, right? Or <laughs> That's just what it was. Yeah. So that was a big impact to me. And then I just knew I couldn't. Maybe it's ADD or whatever it is, but I couldn't pay attention in school. I was always creative. I was drawing. I was always trying to, to sell, right? I was always trying to make a dollar, and I always knew that. So I was always getting into trouble. So I knew at sixth grade, school was not for me. That's how I made that decision. My mom, she was playing both both father figure and mother figure, yeah. and she was very tough on us, but she was always working. I, I right? do want to so, I do want to point out uh, what you said just right now, where you were looking for the father figure in the streets. Right. Being around other people. Yeah. Now that you're older, what what's that thought process that you have of trying to find that love and that absence and you know in myself or, 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 or is it as an overall going back then? Mm. Right now, if you look back at if you look back at it right now with the life that you have lived already, there you're a great testimony to those those kids that are doing the same thing right now. The thing about here is we, we want to help people by listening to stories. So for those for those that are also looking for that father figure, that mother figure in other things that may not lead them into the right direction, right. you know, what what could you say? What what kind of advice would, would you tell them personally that you had to learn? You know, it's really hard because it, as a young kid, obviously, uh, you don't see a lot of these things. And it's kind of hard, right? Yeah. But if I go back, I would make a better choices of the people I hung around with. It has a lot to do with it, with your success. Even now, yeah. I got to be careful because the five friends I hang out with, those are the ones you you end up being like. And your, my grandma would always tell me, Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. There you go. Yeah. And it's so that. true. Yeah. It's so true, man. I mm -hmm. hung out with the drug dealers. I became a drug dealer. Right? I hung out with the party people. We party hard. Right? So it's just, that's what it becomes. So I, I would be very careful of who I hang out myself around. Obviously, it's really hard because in the environment you're growing up in, the zip code you're at, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's kind of tough. But it, as a young, a young child, to make those decisions, but you you do have to make you have to be uh, aware of your surroundings and who you're gonna hang out hang out with, right? Do you, you did you see your mom? What what do you think it was your mom's biggest struggle trying to raise four boys? And dude, like I have so much respect for my mom, bro. Like like. Just thinking about it, even myself now, I'm the provider at my home. My wife is at home, and I have a tough time sometimes, right? I could only think a single mother, her husband, her the love of her life left her for another woman, and uh, and she ends up having to cross the border by herself and start a new life with four boys, right? Just imagine that. So there's so much respect to that, but I think that um, that uh, she was hurting inside so much, bro. Like there's no other way you could, I could I could tell you that, right? Uh, but I think she's such a strong woman. That's one of the reasons I have that lion there. You know, like, I, she, she reminds me of it, the lion of a heart, right? A heart of a lion, right? So um, she went through a lot, bro. So it, it is what it is, right? So, uh, Did you ever have that conversation with her and stuff? Now, after your, after your t like, life and where you're at yeah. now? Because I think right now where you're at, you want to give this knowledge to the youngs, to the people right. that are willing to listen. Right. And we all get to that type of stage where – hey, I'm ready to share what I've been through. And I'm yeah. ready to help others with my story. Mm -hmm. And you're, we can say, man, and undeniably, you're successful. Yeah. But your success took, maybe took a longer route than what others anticipated. Yeah. I was just having a conversation with my boy Alex where people think success happens because you worked hard for six months mm -hmm. or a year. And unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work like that. You Most could do it, it yeah, it could take a year, it could take two years. Y a veces no, no, no te paga para atrás. So, did you ever have that conversation with your mom in the position you are now? Like, after you did everything, after failing and succeeding in business and seeing what she went through with your four brothers or three brothers, like, did you ever have that type of conversation with her? I haven't yet, but we saw what she went through. 
Mm. You know what I mean? There's, there's, she was a hustler, man. You know, like, like you could tell she would cry at night, right? You know, but I haven't had that conversation yet. I'm actually planning a meeting with her on, on the video to talk about that conversation on a podcast. Yeah. So, and that's actually going to be next week, I think. Um, but I haven't had that conversation yet. It's, it's, it's not an easy one. It's, it's not really an easy one, not. bro. It, it's not because, like, uh, you could tell she went through a tough time, bro. Yeah. She's young. She's by herself, right? So, um, so yeah, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. <laughs> I'm trying to get my guy over here to be sensitive, but he's not really sensitive. Dame de tomar y Saca la botella. Saca la botella y lloramos. Yeah. So, um, so not, not to jump, like, timelines and anything, but you said you were a father at 15, right? I, I got my my wife now pregnant at 15 years old. At I 15, think. I don't think any of us are mature at all. How 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 did that play a mental well, part you, in your life? Well, you said it, man. I was very immature, right? So I put my wife through a lot of crap, and, and uh, she could tell you that. So I'm super blessed to have, obviously, my high school sweetheart still with me. I'm super blessed that she put up with me, right, mm -hmm. with all the stuff I put her through. I was very immature. I couldn't even get a job. My thing, like I said, I wanted to be the biggest, baddest drug dealer out there. That was my goal, just like my goal right now, right? I want to grow a national brand. I did all the studying I needed to do to become a drug dealer, right? So I studied the biggest drug dealers. What do they do? What do they look like? Um, I even at school, when I did go to school, I would like, I, I stole a triple beam scale from the school. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I studied how many, how many grams in an ounce, how many ounces in a quarter pound, how many quarter pounds in a pound. How many uh, pounds in a, in a ton? I, I, I studied all that because that was what I wanted to grow up to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, at the end of the day, it, I was very immature, man. And, and, and I think life, the hard knock life, the, the, the things that I went through is what made me more mature along the way. And at the end of the day, I don't want to jump too, too forward on this conversation, but um, God saved my life. And that's what made the big switch in my 20s. Yeah. When that's when I matured. Doing this at, at, again, so we don't keep jumping. Because there's a lot. There's a lot. There's, to, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot to your life that maybe a lot of people don't know and are going to know because you're putting out content daily. Yeah. Um, what, what would you say was one of the things you got illusioned by being a drug dealer and living that lifestyle that you came to realize was not true? I think the same thing that's right now taking life by my own hands. I don't answer to nobody. And just and the risk tolerance that you have there, you have it as an entrepreneur. The only difference is over there is greater. You get killed or you go to jail, right? Yeah, pretty much. So to me, entrepreneurship, yeah, it's risky, but the adrenaline it has in it, I love it. I mm -hmm. still miss the game. Don't get me wrong. Like the parties, the, the atmosphere you're in, right? The, you call the shots. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different. So over here, it's the same thing, but you got to deal with, with state laws, regulations, you know, the stuff people do in the business world, it's a little yeah. bit more cutthroat. They're just wearing a suit. You know what I mean? So so it, it's, it's a little bit different environment. You got to be there. I call it, you know, there's a wolf dressed as sheep here. Mm. You know, so I got to just be more trucha. But that's what kind of got me into the, the drug game. I, I love taking ownership. All my life, I've always been told, like, pretty much you're stupid. Uh, here comes the Flores brothers because my mom was single. She would leave us at the ranch because she had to work. I love my grandparents. They're the most humble people. They taught us how to work. But we always felt like the outsiders, right? My dad left us, okay? These guys don't have a father. Mm -hmm. um, their mom has to work. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're going to end up to be nobodies. Yeah. So all that, I'm like, I'm going to prove to people who I am. And that's what it was. So would you say that becoming a drug dealer and becoming this powerful person mass the emptiness that you were feeling inside of not being confident not having what everybody thought you should be having and having that power created fear in others that not that they can't tell you anything yeah. do you think that having being in the drug game like that having that type of power just masked what the inner child of you was was missing that's a great question bro um i think part of it yes I think growing up in the streets, and most kids grow up in the streets, we have that um, that emptiness and that vacío, right? Mm -hmm. And and you look for it. Some some people look at it for drugs, right? Yeah. They become alcoholics or drug addicts. I looked at it in in, in power and in in taking a hold of my own future, right? Even um, I, the examples at school, I was always like being told what to do, and I, and I would do the opposite, right? 
or when I when I got caught also, I used to cross foils through the border, right? The U.S. Customs would arrest me, and I, and I felt proud of that, right? I, I, that's who I was. That was the identity that I created for myself, that I was going to be the baddest guy out there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just getting, yeah. That, that's a, one, that's adrenaline. Two. True. That's. Oh, bro, we have some great stories, bro, you know, like. What was, what was one of, what was one of the experiences that you felt the most adrenaline in? Man, I have a couple. I'll tell you two that just come into mind. One time we were um, doing this drug deal, a big drug deal. And um, these guys we've been working with for a couple of years, they ended up uh, robbing us and tying us up. That was a big adrenaline for me at that point. Um, I got out of it, whatever. We didn't get killed. You know, I remember the guy pointing the gun in my face, and I looked at it, and I was more mad than anything, right? I was mad, and I was just looking at the barrel, and the guy um, tells me, "What, Ivan, you're not scared? And I just didn't answer. I was just pissed off. And he pissed with me, and I fell to the ground. And I always remember my mom's voice because she always used to tell me, "Hijo, si algo te va a pasar, make sure you pray so God could forgive you." And uh, when I was laying there, the guy was putting the barrel in my in my temple, and I just started praying to God, "Hey God, you know, like forgive me for all my sins." I wasn't scared. I was honestly, I wasn't scared. I got scared afterwards after the whole thing happened. Like, oh shit, I almost died, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, but what I did see, I, everything was in slow motion. I was. I was li- listening to the guys. Are like, you think I was gonna work for a quarter? La la la. And then he's, um, "You're about to die, my dude. You're about to die." And I'm, uh, and I'm like, "Okay." And then at that point, I saw that he grabbed the pillow, and I'm like, two things are gonna happen. He's gonna, he, he doesn't want the sound of the gun to go off too loud, or he's gonna suffocate me." So what he did, he got the pillow, and he was gonna put it over me, but something he stopped. He stopped, and and he just grabbed us, zip tied us. And he ended up uh, they take it, taking us to the to the bathtub, oh, shit. and that's when I am like, oh shoot, these guys are gonna. They grab some knives, they're gonna cut our throats in the bathtub. They put my friend under me first, and they put me on top. I weigh two hundred fifty pounds. The guy was little. I, like, oh, <laughs> I feel sorry he's for this he's, guy. Right? He's so, suffocating there. So they grab the knife, they, they zip tied it, they put us in the bathtub, and then the guy's like, you know what? Um, you could tell his friend he like with his eyes that like, let's not do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. Long story short, it happened. I got out, still kept doing my own thing, but that was a big adrenaline for me. Right? I, I do want to ask. Yeah. You weren't scared of dying? No, because I told you, like I told you, that I always wanted to be this person. So I always knew I had a feeling in my heart that I wasn't going to make it after 24 years old. That was always in my head. I, either I was going to get killed or go to prison for a very long time. So that was my mentality, you know. That's how screwed up you gotta. The people you hang out, hang around with, you gotta be careful, right? Yeah. Um, and then the other one, I remember, fourteen years old. Um, I used to, I used to hang out with these guys. They were polleros, and um, they would uh, tell me, "Hey, um, find drivers for us, and we'll give you money." And they're gonna cross the border, and they're gonna cross people. And we did that. So one of the times, I was like, you know what? I want to go on one of these trips. We end up going to TJ. Uh, I, I took a friend of mine, and uh, we picked up the people in a stolen car. We crossed the border, and then in San Isidro, there's these poles, mm-hmm. right? And and I was I was a young kid, man. I was like 13. I think I was 13 at, at that time, right? Yeah. Um, I was with an, an adult, not knowing. Obviously, it's pretty dumb what we were doing. But um, we're there, and then I look to the, to the right, and there's this lady staring at us in another car. And then she gets off. She's like, that's my freaking car. You guys have my car. And, and we're like, oh, crap. And then uh, <laughs> so they end up, the U.S. customers start uh, running towards us, and we run and run to Mexico. That was a big adrenaline. So those were two of the biggest ones that I think. Uh, you said you weighed how, mu- how, many, how many pounds during that time? Oh, in my 20s, around 250 pounds. You ran fast? No, but that was no, 13. No, that was 13. I was 13. Oh, okay. I was, I was a young kid, man. <laughs> no, back then I could sprint, bro, you know, so. I can still sprint right now. I could beat you. Yeah. Just, no, you can't. He can't sprint for shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, yeah, so those are two stories that I could say. There's a lot of them, but those are two of the big ones that I think were big adrenaline for me. And uh, asking for a friend, can you still cross people or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> it was a joke. I'm I, stay, I stay away from that lifestyle, <laughs> man. I, Asking, asking for a friend though. Asking for a friend. Yeah, no, I stay away from all that. I, it's because I watch out who I hang out. Baja with, Beach Fest is gonna be here soon, so you know <laughs> we're trying to go. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, stolen <laughs> car it is. Let's go, <laughs> yeah. man. So you're 
from then, after when you got caught and you're getting locked up and and you're in life and death situations, when when did you save yourself from yourself? You know, I went through so many things in that lifestyle, and a lot of them were good, but anybody that tells you that I lived that life, there's ups and downs. Correct. But I love the game so much, and I still remember my brother told me once, and one of the times that I was in, in my low peak, because it's ups and downs in that life, he said, um, hey, carnal, like, you, I've seen you go through so much in that life. Like, um, why don't you just cut the bullshit and go all big? And I'm like, wow, that's powerful, bro. You know, obviously, we had a different conversation. You know, like, it was more of a, like, we were pissed off at each other. Yeah. And, um, and I took it. I took it just like I take now. Like, the, the best thing you could do for me, for me to motivate me, is tell me I can't do something. And that's just the way I live my life right now. Like, if I don't have haters, dude, I'm doing something wrong. That's how I look at it. Because I need that push. I need somebody to hate so I can prove something. You know what I mean? So... That's when I tried to go big, and I and I didn't. I was able to make it, um, but I went through all these things. Right, I got caught. Um, those incidents happened to me, and um, one day after I got out of jail, one of the other times, um, I st- kept doing my thing. I still had my connections, and I just wouldn't get it. And it was God talking to me. You could tell, like He started shutting my doors. People started getting caught. People started like some of my good friends are dead. Um, desafortunadamente. And just my whole circle around me, things were getting shut. God was closing doors. I didn't know at the time it was God, but you could tell something was going on. And I was like, man, something's going on. Maybe they're, they're going to raid us or something. Or yeah. do they have a case against me? Because everything was just getting shut down. Yeah. So I get out of jail at one point. I didn't do much time. You know, I, I ended up having to do my time uh, at the end. At, um, we call it a halfway house, um, which it wasn't, as, it, was, it wasn't good, to be honest, because they give you more liberty to do dumb <laughs> stuff. <laughs> So I, um, I ended up getting out. I was fit at the time, and, and I started working out. And one time I was doing a burpee, and I felt a thump in my heart, a big thump. And, and I was like, I felt something was, you know your body. When yeah. something's wrong with your body, I felt a thump. Yeah. So I sat down, and I felt like my heart was just beeping way too fast. And, and I'm like, oh, crap. So I waited like two, three minutes. It didn't stop. It actually got worse so I went to go take a quick shower and it just didn't stop. So I'm like, you know, I got to call 911. So I call 911. The paramedics come in. They take my beat and you could tell like, like their face, they made something was not right. So, hey, yeah. we got to go. Um, they put me in the ambulance and I told my young kid, my, fi- my, my Ivan Jr. was five at the time. He's, I mean, you got to stay with the neighbor. I'll be back. So I was, in the, I was in, the, in the paramedic and you could see my chest going up like this. And so these guys end up telling me, we're going to put something in your body and it's going to be okay. So right when they injected me, you could say, like, oh, my chest just flatted out. And I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to, to the ER. We went over there. They did a bunch of analysis. But that's when I'm, I started speaking to God. I'm like, hey, you know what, God? Um, I think this is the time. If you really exist and if you're really there for me, this is the time. I, yeah. for, forgive me for all my sins. I'm ready to start over. And, um, and that's when my life changed. I decided to leave everything. Like, there's people that owe me thousands of dollars i left everything i didn't want to know anything just like now i don't want to know anything about that life because that's who i serve i just serve jesus you know what i mean so i ch- that's the moment that changed my life and after after the the i got out of the hospital i said hey, what you guys inject on me he's like oh that was a thing to stop your heart oh I'm fuck like, I'm like, what do you mean he's like, yeah you, you were you were gonna have a heart attack your your your, your palpitations were at 279 and you were in your resting like wait Jesus so God. So that changed my life. All these things I went through, going to jail, getting tied up, all this drama, nothing changed my life until my health was at risk and and I found God. (coughs) All right, so we took a little break because Dylan needed to refill his cup. Oh, oh, I needed to refill my cup, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're the worst one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, To resume what we were talking about, um, you said you you had accepted God, you had changed your life. Was it a fear of you dying at that point that you switched it up, or was it the fear that you were going to leave your kid or your kids at that time fatherless that you switched it up? I think it, it was three things. It was the fear of, um, of like I told you, so many doors were closed. It, it's just unnatural. It, it's, it's something uh, that you wouldn't really believe until you saw it. 
everything was closed on me and I know it was God talking to me. So I had that fear. Like if it's not now, it's not now. Like yeah. it's done. And he was calling me. So he closed those doors and I made that decision. And obviously I saw my kids. I'm like, what am I doing? This lifestyle brings nothing good. Um, and I think it's time to make a change. So I gave my heart like completely to God. When you made that transition, what was the first thing you lost? When I made that transition, the first thing I lost was obviously the friendships. And I just lost them. They would, they, you know, they, oh, he's become soft, right? Those type mm. of conversations you start hearing. Um, but I think I lost more of um, uh, my mental health. Mm. The biggest one, because making the transition was one of the toughest things I've ever done, Becoming going from that life of, of purpose, because I had a purpose. Yeah. I had a passion. So the worst thing you could do to any person is take that away. So little that I know God had a bigger plan for me, right? So he had a big plan for me. But at that time, I didn't understand. So I leave that life of always in a rush, always had this adrenaline, always taking this risk. And suddenly I have nothing, right? Yeah. What do I do now? I end up working uh, minimum wage somewhere. I felt I felt destroyed, man. You know, while my kids, my, while my friends were driving Benzins, Beamers, you know, partying, popping bottles. And I'm like, what am I doing? Driving fish around, right? Um, so I think that was one of the biggest things, my mental health. I started getting anxiety, some depression. Obviously, when you, hit, when you go through those mental health issues, especially as a man, right? And this is just me personally. You don't want to share, especially with your wife and kids. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So in reality, you're alone, bro. As a man, you don't want to say that. Yeah. You know? So you're going through that. You're going through weird thoughts. Um, waking up with night sweats. And and I went through that alone. I went through that for like probably like eight years, right? So, um, and then um, God, it was God's process for me. Mm. So that was the biggest transition for me, losing that, the mental health and all that. It's tough, man, especially when, yeah. when you get to acknowledge, when you get to acknowledge what mental health is. Right. And, <clears throat> you know, growing up, even as, how you said, as a man, yeah. you're, we're men in this room that when we go through a tough time, we ain't going to share that with anybody, not even our closest, our closest friend. Why? Because I don't want him to see me that I'm weak. I don't want him to see me that I'm down right now because what do people do when, when you're down, people prey on it. That's right. I could take more or you know what? Fuck it. He's down. He's losing. I'm going to kick him on the floor now. Now he can't, he's not going to get up. Right. But the most powerful thing now as a man is being able to talk about your emotions, right. about your feelings. Because if you're able to say that yourself, then what can the next person say about you when you said it already yourself? Exactly. You can't take anything away from 100%. me. You can't tell me I, I'm a cry. You can't tell me I'm weak. No, man, I'm vulnerable. But my vulnerability will not be taken as a weakness. It's a power, it's a strength. Because how you said earlier, when someone says something about you, it takes everything inside you not to respond back. 100%. But don't make no mistake. You try it, you will find out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, one of this this quote that I've always said and resented with because of Kevin Gates is like, if you entertain the clown, you become part of that circus. So you mm -hmm. can say this A, B, and C about me, but if I entertain you, then I be I'm just like you, and I, I'm not that, and I won't be that because it it took all this that we had to go through just to get to here. And imagine if we start regressing and going back to that same lifestyle, the same mentality that we once had, which is I want everybody to fear me. Mm -hmm. No, it's like I want everybody to respect me. Whether you love me or hate me, that's up to you. But just respect who I am and what I do and how I do things. And if I can inspire you to, to do whatever you feel in your life that you need, great. But if I inspire you to not be like me, hey, then I still did my job. Right. Yeah. Um, that's one of the questions I did want to ask when from earlier. Now where you're at right now, would you rather be feared or loved by everybody? That's a funny question because I asked my team the same thing. <laughs> and 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 um and I think um I still rather be feared than loved because love uh people look at as a weakness at one point. Mm. I think uh weakness um People end up preying upon you. So I tell people, even though I'm Christian, as long as you don't touch me, touch my family, everything's good. Yeah. But don't confuse uh, that kindness for weakness, right? 
Because um, I think the, the scariest people, the people that um the toughest people are the ones that um that are not um how can I say that 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 are not acting tough, right? There's a beast inside of them that you gotta be careful not to wake up. Yeah. So so at the end of the day I keep to myself, man. And and I'd rather be feared. Yeah, we would rather have both, but I've seen what love does a lot of times. And it's 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 it could be some weakness in there and people take advantage of that. Yeah. So that's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, so going back a little bit to that transition, uh, I did go through, um, God, when he's, when he, when God said, I'm going to save you again and be born again, I think he really meant that. Cause I started like really bad, man. He took everything away from me, like my pride, my ego, right. Yeah. Um, financially everything, right. Even my wife was like, what's happening to you? Like you're soft a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was used to this guy, like rugged, right? Like yeah. in the streets. And now she's like seeing this guy that loves God and prays for people, puts hands on people to pray for them. And, and, um, it was just a whole different life. And, 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 and I'm super blessed that I went through that. I thank God every day that, that he polished me that way. Mm. Right. So yeah. That polishing part. I love that. I love that. Yeah. You're in, and we still go through that. I still go through polish. It's daily, man. It's It's daily, bro. It's it's daily. daily. It's weekly. I could say right now, hell yeah, we're saved, bro. But I can't tell you that on Saturday we're not gonna sin and get and retract just a little bit. Yeah. And I always say sometimes things happen and you get out of character. Things happen. It's normal. That's why I don't. That's why like uh, a lot of people like I try to live my life Christ like and, and but I, I don't do Bible thumping because of that. Who am I to tell you mm-hmm. that you're wrong yeah. when I could be messing up tomorrow, right? But all I have to me, Christianity is about having a relationship with God, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. and it's like uh, King David, right? The reason he was so anointed by God was there was, if you really read it, is because he really loved God with all his heart. That's yes. it. Yeah, that's all. That's all it is, man. Mm-hmm. You really have to love God with all your heart, have a relationship with Him, and that that's really it. You gotta be recessive to it. Exactly. You gotta be willing to exactly to to embrace it. That's exactly. the word. Embrace it. Embrace exactly. the love. Embrace. Right. Uh, the gratitude and you know you get to a point in your life we talked about this probably a couple months ago but you get to a point in your life where you really think about everything where yeah. the moments you fuck you should have died today yeah and the moments you shouldn't have made it home today and you're like why am i still here you ask yourself that question i believe when you go through a major transition whether whatever industry you're in or Position you're in, you go through that transition of, and you ask yourself that question: Why in the hell am I still here today? Why am I? Why am I alive? Why are you keeping me here? And then you you have to. It's like a movie. You gotta rewind it. You gotta look at everything that's happening. And be like, fuck. Maybe my purpose in life was much bigger than I ever anticipated. Maybe I am worth it. Maybe I am. I I should be here. God you know, has a purpose for all of us, bro. For everybody. And until you're willing to step into your light, then you'll find out. Exactly. You know, I've said it before, you know, he was merciful on us in a lot of days and a lot of times that we shouldn't have made it home. And for some people to understand that, it's it's tough because we all had moments, even younger, where we go party with our people. That's right. You're drinking, you're having fun, you're at a party. And you have no idea that that same party was shot up 10 minutes later and you left 10 minutes earlier That's right. or you're drinking and you made it home. Hey, what about that other person that was sober and got hit by a drunk driver? That's right. You know what I mean? So all these right. moments, you're like, you know what? Let's fucking think about this. Why am I here? Why am I still alive? And as much as you want to say, you know what? Fuck, I hate my life, bro. I'm not good. You woke up today. The person next to you did not. That's so right. what 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 do you have to complain about? And I do want to shine light on on your wife, high school sweetheart. That's right. 14, 15, yeah. all the way to now. What what is it about your wife that or what did your wife do that just kept this mm-hmm. kept this Yvonne there, bro? Yeah, man, that's I mean, she did a lot, bro. You know, and I think um, I'll take a zip for that one. <laughs> Me too, bro. Me too. I'll take a zip with you, homeboy. You know, <laughs> you know, 
I ended up, believe it or not, it might sound corny, whatever you want to say. I love my wife more now than ever mm. because the, she's the, her and my mom, but she's the only person that I could say that was with me throughout the whole process. And, um, and I think besides Jesus, she, she took a lot of shit from me, a lot of crap from me. And she still loved me. She was still praying for me, even though, yeah, every relationship has, has issues, right? Yeah. But she's always been very supportive, man. Yeah. And I always tell her that si algún día pasa algo entre nosotros, because you gotta take marriage per year, dude. Like things could happen. People's uh, lives change, yeah. emotions, right? And I understand that's part of life. I hope that never happens to us. I I, I tell her every day, hey, mija, hey, um, in, in English, I'll tell you, pray for me, because obviously there's a lot of temptation out there. I tell her every day, and she understands that. Um, but her, she um, she put up with all that stuff. You know, me partying, girls, you know, all that type of lifestyle. And now that I've, you could say, made it, because um, you never really make it. This could t be taken like that away from me exactly, tomorrow. Yeah. If it, my ego gets to me or I become too proud, proud for about it. One of my biggest fear that I have, actually, is losing a, a God's favor mm -hmm. at this point. That's all I care about, God's favor. I don't care about you. I don't care about nobody else, what they think about me. Mm -hmm. All I care about is if, I'm, if I have God's favor. That's all I care about. And and my wife, she she just stood by me, though. She still does. Like, she sees me when I'm down. When I have depression, you know, she's like, hey, en la mañana, vamos. What's next? What's next? She pushes me to that next level, even though she doesn't know it, because I push myself, and I'm, I'm like 100%, right, 100 miles an hour. But she's always telling me, hey, what's next? Hey, don't let that get to you. I have some issues with family right now, right, with, when it comes. I never mix business with family, but like, hey, no te agüites. Keep going. God is with us. Remember that. Has he not, has he left you alone? Look at everything you went through. Cause I mean, we're talking about certain things right now, but yeah. the story is freaking long, man. Yeah. yeah. Right. We're, we're, we're climbing, we're coming we're up. We're touching the surface yeah, right now. We're yeah. coming up 25 yeah. plus years into yeah, an hour and a half. Exactly. And so, so my wife, bro, like, what does she mean to you? What is she, what is, what does my wife mean to me? She means the world. I just made, I just made a, a video uh, recently is um, if, uh, if um, can a man that cheats be trusted? I don't believe mm, that. Mm -hmm. He can't be trusted. Mm. I went through that. In my old life, you shouldn't have trusted me because if I cheated on my wife, if I cheated on my family, what makes you think I'm not going to cheat on you? They're, they're the most precious thing you could ever have and most loyal thing to you and you betray them. Why would I not betray you when the shit hits the fan? Right? So... Yeah. So to me, like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm perfect. Le pido a Dios. That's why I tell her to pray for me. Because men, we're very visual. That's our biggest weakness. Everybody, every man, even pastors fall. So I pray every day. I tell God, hey, God, once I step out of the door, please be, please be with me. If you're not, no me dejes salir. Don't let me get out of here. Because I don't want to be without God when I step out of that door or in my house. Yeah. Right? So she means the world to me, man. She means the world to me. That's all I could say. Yeah. It's uh to get to that point to like really be able to put your feelings into words, it's the hardest shit ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like yeah. literally Dylan always tells me I want to fight you, but I feel like that's I love you, fool. You know what I'm saying? I love you, dog. I fucking love you, bro. <laughs> but sometimes but it, I but do want to fight yeah, you. But it, but it comes in the yeah. I want to fight you every day type of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when when you have someone that goes with goes with you through transitions. No one knows you best than them, right? And right now, off a of camera, I was speaking about my guy, and I tell anybody, anybody, and I don't give a fuck who you think you are, unless you're there in this moment, then you will never know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. You can have an opinion, everybody's entitled, but you will never know this feeling. And that's the thing about social media, yeah. being in front of the camera. You're gonna, people are so scared to be judged. Like, man. We all are, bro. Yeah, we're in the world where the first thing anybody's ever going to do by the, from the first side of you is, I'm going to judge you. And I'm going to judge you without knowing. I think every video that we put out, there's always there's always those people, those haters, you can say. Yeah. That always judge, no matter what. Oh, your hat looks wrong. Look, for you're, years. You're doing this, you're doing that. Yeah, for years, thing. everybody told me your story needs to be heard. And, and in my old life, I used to live by this, by Tupac, right? Only God could judge me. And I lived that, dude. Like, you could say whatever you want. I just lived my life. And I stopped that because of that, right? So I don't, I don't, what are people going to think about me? So when I decided to go public in social media, 
it was really to help other people, man. It's not about the followers, right? It's more about the value you bring to the viewer or to your supporter. There's people that need to hear this stuff. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, um, I think you got to put that away of being judged because we're all going to be judged. And I think at the end of the day, only God can really judge us because everybody has their skeletons in the, in the closet, bro. Oh, hell yeah. Everybody, bro. I don't yeah. care who you are. Yeah. You're trying to paint this picture in social media and your personal life. I laugh at it, bro, because there's a lot of stuff I went through, and I, I share a lot of my stuff, but I could tell you right now, and I'll say it in this podcast, I'm not perfect, and I will fail you someday. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just the reality, the facts. It's, so I told my brother, hey, bro, I heard this, I think it was JC. Is, um, I hear um, this person's talking about you, right? And, and he's like, uh, I'm not worried why he's talking about me. Why is he talking about me in front of you, right? So what I see a lot right now is your loyalty. Where's your loyalty to people, right? We have some issues right now. And I'm like, hey, there's no, nobody should ever feel, at least in your tight group, in the main people, there's certain people, you don't have a big group, um, that nobody should ever feel safe talking about each other. And if that, that does happen, you're not in the right group. Yeah. And I told my brother that, I'm like, bro, you know what? As brothers, if a cousin or anybody comes and talks shit about me or you or my other brothers, between us, we could have our own pedos. We could have our own, our broncas, yeah. or our own, our, our own situations. Yeah. But the outside world should never find out about that. Because that's a weakness, bro. Yeah. And if anybody comes and talks shit, that means you, you, you better stop it right then. Tell, yeah. hey, you know who you're talking to? That means your kingdom is getting infiltrated. <laughs> exactly. And, and once that, once you expose that, you know you don't have a tight circle. Exactly. And that's the thing, like, we, what, what, some people don't understand, and then they get to understand is once you're in here, hey, we locked in. Yeah. But the moment that is questioned, I'm sorry, there's a door, mm-hmm. and exactly. we won't reach out ever again, and we won't allow you back in. Why? Because I like said I want to feel safe in the room that I'm in, and I want to know whatever we talk about. Right. It's not anywhere else hurting hearing from other people, because again, right. then what kind of what kind of friends are you have? What kind of family? True. Blood or blood or not. Blood or not, bro. Blood or not, matter. you can have re- right. you can have the tight relationship with someone that's not even close to being your blood, but because the bond you have, that's even greater than that. And people will hate on it and pray on it because right. they want to break that. And just because you don't have that relationship doesn't mean I can't have it. People always want to break that. We we, we have something we have something in my family always, and you heard it before because he's always at my house sometimes. Whenever someone talks about someone else, we just tell them, hey. No hables de alguien que no se puede defender ahorita. Alguien que no está aquí. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's right. So Either that or like I literally just tell them, like, how oh, you said, know who you're talking to right now. Exactly. And the situation that's happening right now, too, that I'm in, like I even told my boy and I have told his parents and I've told someone who's close, if I hear something bad, I'm going to shut it down as soon as it is. Right away, bro. <clears throat> and it has to happen with with your friends. I told I told my guy, I was like, bro, like, that should be, that sh- you shouldn't even ask for that. Yeah, that's how that type oh, of no, response that, that should be immediate. Right, immediate. Spot, yeah. You know, like if you stay quiet in a situation like that, that means you're approving what's going yeah. on. Yeah, and you're not. And, and it's what, hard. Like you rarely see yeah, that. What's like, that word? Hey, but parents, you know, right? dije nada. Yeah, but you didn't stop it either. Exactly. 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 Porque no lo paraste. No, no, es porque no. We're in the same situation now. Now we're in a situation bigger that you were there when this person did. It's puro cheese, man. Puro Drake cheese, said it. Man. Drake said it best. Yeah. Guys talk more than girls these days. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no. But Guys, you know what? He said it in a different word. To, but combat, to combat that, you got to keep your circles very tight and tight. very, very, very minimal, bro. Yeah. You you created a you created an empire. You're creating an empire. You know, the Buffalo spot is not a one-stop shop. It's not a one location and done. It You have... We're going national, bro. National. Everywhere. Every city. Different states. So it... You... I'm, you've created, and even the life that you were present before, you needed to have a circle that was tight enough to grow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you can put both worlds together in a sense, what's the one thing they both have in common? Take a sip of water. Hold on. Yeah, let's take a sip. It, it's tequila. Don't worry. No, so, I'm just playing. So what exactly is your question when they uh, that they both have in common? What's one thing that the way you ran yourself... In your past life and the way you oh, run now. your business now, okay. what's the one thing they you would say to have similarities or in common? Okay. So there's a couple. Okay. Hard work, 
there's there's let's go back faith hard work because if you have faith and you don't work hard you're not going to go anywhere no te va a caer mana del cielo, right? Like, God oh, God shit. talks about that, bro. Hey, yo, that's true as fuck. That's you gotta true. work hard, bro. Yeah. Hard work, faith, hard work, persistence, discipline, and consistency, bro. Mm-hmm. And I've always been that. I've cool. always I've always had some type of faith. I've always hurt, worked very hard. I'll outwork anybody, bro. And my team knows that. And my key people, the people that are, are in my circle, they're the same way. And that's why we've been able to build these brands because of us, the solid ones that are in the team. Right? So that's really what it is. See, people criticize, like, oh, the entrepreneur, oh, this, this guy's making this money. And at the end of the day, like, did you really go through what I went through? Did you go through the depression, the anxiety, losing family because of business, right? Losing everything. Making a decision between uh, buying a gallon of milk or, or, or sleeping in a restaurant, right? Or, or paying your employees. Those are the decisions a lot of people don't talk about. All the entrepreneurs that you see on social media, a lot of it is fake, bro. It's freaking crazy, the, the, the Ferraris. Uh, bro, like, that's nuts. Talk about the real crap that's going on right behind the scenes. Like, in, like anxiety and depression, I could guarantee you there's a lot of people going through it. Mm-hmm. There, make no mistake, Because people fake it, man. People, Very few can make that. I want, I want to have the 30-second perfect clip, but then I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to feel so empty in my life. Yeah. That's the one thing. When we walk out of here, we feel good because this is therapy. This right. is free therapy. We don't have to go pay right. $200 to go speak to someone. And I encourage people to do it. We hear every a lot of people doing it, and it works for them. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't work for you, if it's not for you, there's other options. There is the gym, right? There is talking with your friends. There is, And when you do something that how we're doing right now, you're just having a genuine conversation with no restrictions and no holding back. I don't have a lot of great days. I have a lot of bad days, but the great ones that I have make up for it, right? And we don't deny it. Today, I'm, I don't feel good, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm not going to get up and go do whatever the fuck I got to do, exactly. right. especially when you're trying to build something. When you're trying to build something that no one ever believed in or no one believed right. in you, hey, well, you got to make, like, when you open your first restaurant, I don't, I don't know exactly, but I would say probably out of 100 people, maybe 90 didn't believe in this was going to work out. Well, most of them didn't believe in us. You know, that, that's just the reality, right? Yeah. Like, it's the, it's the what, what is he thinking? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I still would, I still don't understand. And, and I mean, this is just my belief. I don't know how anybody could go through depression or anxiety without God. Mm. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't see that man, because if it wasn't for him, I, I don't think I would be here. I would have taken that's a whole different route, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, um, and even that, right. Going through the entrepreneurship of, of the faith that you're going to make it, seeing the vision from here to there, and everybody's telling you no. Even my mom, she would tell me, hey, that's the riskiest thing you could get into his restaurant, which is true. She did that out of a place of love, right? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of people don't understand that. And you have a vision and a mission, and it takes a lot of faith and a lot of crap to go through. And I feel like at the end of the day, it's not you trying to prove yourself to someone else or to anyone. It's just trying to prove yourself that you can make it. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's like, like you said, the worst thing you can tell me is that I can't do it. Right. You don't want to prove them wrong. You want to prove yourself wrong. Exactly. Like, I can fucking do this shit. I can go through hell and then come out like nothing. So. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's just that um, if God gives you a purpose, how can you not do something without it, with it, right? It's just, it's, we all have a purpose, and I think we're selfish when we don't execute. And I know this is my purpose. I know for a fact. Yeah. That it was restaurants. It's branding. It's creating a team, leading a team, taking people from uh, my story, from a bad life to this, what I'm now. Giving people that opportunity. Hey, if this guy could do it for a kid from San Isidro, how can we not do it? And that's yeah. what I want. You know, like, there's a lot of kids out there or friends that uh, in my past that are like, hey, Ivan, how did you do it? Hey, I still remember, like, hey, bro, like, you could do it. There's nothing yeah. special about me, bro. I, I flunked first grade. I dropped out of high school. My vocabulary, you guys see, I'm not, there's nothing special. I'm not using all these big words. So at the end of the day, you could do it too. That's the. That's just the reality of the fact. Right? That's mm-hmm. that's the truth. That's the truth. And what people don't want to hear is the truth. True. People want you to paint it perfect. That, hey man, you just got to study, work hard, and they'll be there. I am not scared. I'm not scared one bit of the repercussions that come with after I say something. That's good. I say this here, and it's here to stay forever. Social media. Your video will be out there until you're dead and even past it. That's okay. 
someone told me that, have you ever thought that your content, if you have kids, your content is a journal and a diary for your kids to see who you were and how you were during those times? That's what I tell. That's one of the main reasons I started social media to leave that. It's yeah. It's yeah. it's a uh, you know actually cool. right now that, that we took a little break, um, I was thinking about that and it was like you know what, my life isn't meant for you to like it. My life isn't meant for you to understand it. My life is my life. My journey is my journey. That's right. If it fits you, cool. And if you can't understand it and you don't like it, hey, I'm so sorry, but I'm not. Because that's a you type of feeling. And yep. you have to deal with that on your own. Right. Because there's going to be friends. How you said earlier, friends come and go. Some people get taken. Some people mm-hmm. just fall off. And Dylan's one of those that reminds me every time that, you know, it's they just, they're just not part of your journey. Mm-hmm. Our guy Jose said it one time where he was, the door that you're about to walk in through, not everybody can fit in there. Not everybody can walk through that same door in your next chapter. And that's for... It's transitions. We're chapters in this journey where we started to where we continued and to where we are now and to where we're about to enter again. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to you have to reevaluate yourself. You're not the same Ivan you were when you were 14. You're not the same one from the first time you got locked up from the first when you got saved by God. Like three months ago. I didn't know that. <laughs> 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 We ain't going that far, man. Right, four months ago I started social media. Yeah, not the same same one. Like Mayweather said it best: as much as people hate him or love him, it's like that's right. If you don't, if you don't change a year, a month, a minute, a week, you're wasting time. I am not the same person. So love me or hate me, but I am me, and I gotta sit with myself every single day. Um, but we 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 do gotta shine light on this. Because we, we go to the Montebello uh, location. Okay, that's a Before friend. a haircut. Shout out, Mayo. Before uh, a haircut. I go to, my, my parents love the one in uh, Glendora. That's a they, franchise location. They, too. they freaking drive all the way to Glendora. Just to, I love it, bro. My freaking parents love their wings. We bro. literally, I think, what do we what do we have? 30, about 30 minutes to spare before the haircut. Oh, yeah. And we, always <laughs> and we just went, spot. boom. We always go to the <laughs> We're like, Did you guys try wings or buffalo fries? We're known for our buffalo fries. Buffalo yes. fries. I get the buffalo yeah. fries. Buffalo fries. Got the wings. Oh, oh the Cali burrito. I love the Cali burrito. Yeah. Cali Oof. burrito. Ese si come. Nah, come. No lo invites al restaurante. Ese si come. Este güey come de todo. I'll leave you broke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for what does it take or what did it take from you personally, mentally, physically, emotionally, to open one location? Which one was the baby? The baby that's, that took off, mm-hmm. it was the Buffalo spot. It was my, my long. You could say the one that made it take off was Compton location. Because even I opened El Encinal Mexican food. Mm-hmm. That one failed. And then I opened the Buffalo spot in Long Beach. And that one was failing. And then with the two months, I found in Craigslist an ad on the Compton location. When I opened that one, that's when they both took off. So the one that you could say the one that started the Buffalo spot was the Long Beach location. Yeah. And then the one that took off was Compton. Were you not since your first one failed? You were you not were you you weren't hesitant or scared to open the Buffalo spot? I mean, you always you're always scared, bro. You always have fear, but it was just determination of being somebody and and trying to find how am I gonna substitute what I used to be to now, right? Like to build something for my family, for my kids, for myself. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't want to be part of that old life again. So what am I gonna do? And obviously, I, I'm like I, I said in some of my videos, you know, there's going to be so many failures, but quitting is not an option. Maybe quitting is not an option. You know, the only way you fail is when you quit. When you decide to throw in the towel, that's when you're done. What about when if I tell you, you know, bro, I'm, I'm a little tired. I need time. I don't use that. I don't let my team use that word tired, the T word here, bro. We don't. There's no such thing as that. There's no such thing as time, the tired. You got to go all at it. 100%. You can't stop. You have said this before. You gotta learn how to. to. You have to learn how to rest, not how to quit. Exactly. You could take a day off and just recoup and 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 start thinking, right? Because you need you need to uh, rethink things, but you you can't quit. You can't stop. That's a. I mean, uh, shout out Jose. Jose, No way, best trainer in the world out here. But you know, there's and we've done it ourselves. I think I'm the only one. 
that doesn't show when I take breaks, but our team knows that, you know, we don't miss a Monday. We never have in almost a year now. But some people don't know is sometimes we we stack our episodes in that same week or two in one week weekend. Mm-hmm. And like I my team knows, hey, you know what, guys, we've been going hard for two months. We've been going nonstop. Hey, we're going to double up this week and then we'll be good for the next two, three weeks. Okay. Breathe. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is breathe. Take it. Take a couple of days because what happens is also shining light on mental health. You know, you do get tired. You do go through through stress. Your body can only take so much non-sleep, right? If you're three, four hours, yeah, it's cool. It sounds really amazing, but no one knows the after effects, right? You know, and the only people that get those to get to see that side is sometimes your loved ones. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to communicate. You can't be affectionate. You can't you can't be emotional to anybody. It and takes a toll on you. It way. takes a toll. So sometimes you do need a break, but one thing you can is I yeah. even if we take a break we don't record this weekend doesn't mean we don't post it doesn't mean we don't get content out there because if we stop working then what are we fucking doing we're making an excuse why not to show up today mm-hmm. i don't care you feel you feel sad you feel lonely you feel angry anxiety work is there it's up to you to go get it and that's that difference maker we've I told you right right now earlier, it's a head to head. It's a competition. As much as there's room for people to eat at this table, it's cool, but it's a competition. It's it's a race, and if you take a break, like uh, what is what's that uh, the turtle and the rabbit or whatever, is it the rabbit? The tur- tortoise, tortoise, the, and the tortoise rabbit. and the and the rabbit, yeah, the hare, whatever. And the hare, yeah, yeah. The hare took took a break, and what happened? Boom. The tortoise came. Something that helped me with depression and anxiety, and I think it's true, and it's still, again, our grandparents say so many dichos, he's a, and this is also, right? Um, so what, what they mean by that is um, if you keep yourself busy, you don't give anxiety and depression time of day in your mind and Chance. your body. And I think that helped me a lot because I've been going 100 miles an hour for the last 10 years. Like, I've only had taken one vacation, uh, I think, in the last 10 years. We went to Hawaii. I took my whole family. I was very proud of that moment. Yeah. To me, that was a successful moment. Are, you, ado- to- are you adopting kids? <laughs> <laughs> he was, yeah, yeah. I can work for free, homeboy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. but, Give me security at your locations. I'm ready. But just for people that have depression, anxiety, they want to stay at home. They want to yeah. go to sleep. Or I mean, it affects everybody differently. But once you get into that state of mind and want to stay home, I think that's when you give it more energy to affect your life. Yeah. And I didn't give. I, I would feel down, but I would wake up and keep going. I wouldn't like. Oh, I feel I feel sick or this and that. I would just keep going, keep going, keep going, and I I think I got out of it in a lot a lot of prayer, right? Yeah, I, I think that's um. When did we take a break, guys? Like on two weeks ago, no went up north. Mother's Day weekend. Mother's Day. Mother's Day weekend. weekend. I I we took a break, and I I literally had to tell my team, I'm like, guys, like, I'm tired, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I just I need my grandpa's and my uncle's buried up north of Santa Maria. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I I need to go, I need I need to go get away. I need to go and talk to them, mm-hmm. but I also need to pray. And I was like, I need to, I just need to go that way. And one thing that, um, that I it hit me really well when I came back. I said I was good. Was I got to Santa Maria? I want to say about four or five ish, and I pulled up to the cemetery and right away. Said hi, and I was like, you know what? I can't talk right now, but I'll come back tomorrow, and I'll be ready to talk to you and tell you about my day and tell you about how it's been going. And then the next day before I came back this way, I was like, hey, like, I'm not perfect. It's It's been tough. It's been a struggle. I've messed up a lot of times, and I've been messing up, but I promise you I'll be better, and I'll do better. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes you got to take that break. You got to talk to whoever you need to talk to, whether they're physically present or not present. Tell them how you feel. Pray if you need to. There's one time I did pray. about. I prayed outside in the rain before I walked into the house. Mm-hmm. And when someone behind you is there, you know, like, oh, shit, someone's there. This time I never, I didn't get scared. I felt someone behind me, and all I said was, okay you got me 
thank you. Amen. Right. Boom. And I, I had to, I had to tell my mom, I had to tell my brother that's going through a tough time about that. And I was like, hey, it's going to be okay. If I felt this, oh man, I know you're going to. Yeah. And uh, so to the whole point is, it's okay to take a break. Yeah. But it's not okay to make an excuse. It's not. Because once you make one excuse, you make, you make the next one and the next one. That's and right. you have three different franchises, mm-hmm. three different diff- – each one is, is, their own, is their own name and has their own uh, – how do you put this? Had entity. Entity, brand? yeah, yeah. To, take, to make one takes a lot, but to make three – there's some there's a common denominator and it's the man behind this whole thing right but what does it take for this person this man this denominator to make everything work what is it what is what is something that it takes from you that no one knows i mean you know it again is my faith man my faith goes a long way i think that's what it is I have faith that things are going to be okay at the end of the day. No matter what I go through, I'm going to make it happen. And, and, and I, 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 said, I say it again, we all have a purpose. We all have a gift from God, God-given gift. And when you find that gift, you, you take it, man. You take it, and you go 100 with it. Yeah. That's what it is. And I, this is my gift. This is what God had prepared for me. I truly believe that. And, and this is how things played out, right? So... So I think I was destined for this. I think this is the I'm on the right track. I'm, I mean, it hasn't been easy because yeah. um, I think every great entrepreneur, every great successful person, they have to go through the struggles and the storm because after the storm is when you see greatness and you see what what people want is God. God wants them to see what he's done in people's lives. That's what I think. And by me being here with you right now, I know I will touch some people. Mm-hmm. Some people like, ah, you know, uh, talking about God, but at the end of the day, I gave his message out. Yeah. And that's what's needed. You're God used me for that. You're a vessel. Exactly. What yeah. is what is the saying? God gives uh God gives his soldiers the toughest battle or something? Yeah. God gives yeah. God something. gives your gives his toughest soldiers the toughest battle. Because exactly. you know you're gonna make it out. Like there's always sunshine at the end of that fucking storm. Oh, Hell yeah. Like all you gotta do is just keep hold on. <laughs> Look at at, at at the at at the hardest times of my life. I was, as a Christian, that transition, um, I would spend a lot of time praying to God, crying, dude. Like, th- there's so many things that I went through, but I remember at one point, um, I, I told God, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell him why, like, why me? Because why not me, right? But I'll be like, Hey, Padre, like, help me through this. Like, how do I get away from this? What, what's going on? And then I always read this part in the Bible. I think it was Peter, or yeah, I think it was Peter. He said, I. Don't he said in Spanish because I read my Bible in Spanish. He said, uh, uh, "A mí no me crucifiquen como a mi Dios. A mí crucifiquen me boca abajo." You know, to me that was powerful. It's like if you're gonna crucify me, crucify me upside down because I don't deserve to be crucified like him. So who am I to complain about those all those issues? And and compared to those guys, those guys were persecuted. They cause those guys were crucified, right? Yeah. So I'm going through depression, anxiety, losing family members because of business, or or just a lot of things, right? But these guys are getting crucified, so I always took that to heart. How'd you lo- how how'd you manage that though? You, that's a big thing. Losing family members because of business. How do you how do you manage to keep on going when you believe that the people closest to you, blood related, should be the ones supporting you? How do I manage that? I mean, there's no easy way around that. You know, you know, a lot of people, and I heard this. I don't remember who sent it to me, but he said everybody talks about cutting people off but they don't talk about the process of going through that, cutting pe- those people off, right? Mm-hmm. So I lost I lost brothers, bro, because of this business. I lost cousins because of this business. You see, when you start growing, it, I, I think what happens is that even friends, you start growing. It's not that you don't want those people around you, but you're just going to a whole different level, and those people don't want to catch up. And you can't afford. You're such, you're such um, focused on your vision and your mission that you cannot afford to deviate from that and focus on if, if they're going to make it or not. Either they step it up or they're going to stay down there. That's just the reality. It's not cutthroat. That's why people, oh, entrepreneurs are cutthroat. It's not that, dude. We have a mission and a vision that we got to accomplish. 
and we have no time for all that other bullshit. We don't. Have, I don't party, bro. I, I think after 10 p.m. there's nothing good out out there. I don't go out there. Like you said earlier, you could get hit by a car, drunk driver. You could get in a fight, or somebody like ends up saying something to my girl. If we out to out in the club. What's gonna happen, right? Yeah. As a man, I gotta handle my business. What <laughs> if that guy has a gun, and shoots my wife? Shoots yeah. me. Literally. A so I avoid all that crap, dude. Like yeah. I'm so focused, bro. I sleep at the same time every day. I wake up at the same time every day. I pray. I work out. I read my Bible. I read my book. I go to work. I, I, I have my routine dialed in, bro. I have no time to. Oh, you're feeling this way. I, I don't have time for that. I just have a mission. I have a mission to serve God. The purpose He gave me, the God-given gift, and that's what I'm gonna do in this world. What time do you wake up? What's your routine 4:30 like? 4:30 in the morning. 4:30 in the morning every day. Shit, I'm barely going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, like respectfully, I'm barely going to say I, I, I. <laughs> He's not lying. My thoughts keep me up at yeah, night. No, I really I, can't. I don't, I, honestly, guys, I don't really sleep because my thoughts are always running. Mm. Like uh, my thoughts are always running. Like what am I gonna do next? Who's gonna be after me when it comes to business? Okay, what's what's going on here? This HR issue. Who's wants to sue me? Um, who lost his Fuck. his 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 drive with the camera? You know <laughs> what, what content is in there? The like, I'm always thinking of everything. <laughs> I'm always thinking of everything, guys. Yeah. And that's an entrepreneur. It's, it's, it's not, yeah. I'm not special. That's just a, a okay. So guy. why for the for these people, we always we always post our our podcast five in the morning because there's either drivers that are driving already at that time, mm -hmm. there's people on the east coast that are listening to this, or there's people that are are not right in the head and wake up that early to go to the gym. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. But you you get up at four thirty in the morning every day. Why do you do that? I do it because I love waking up early. That's the time I'm able to spend time with God. That's the most special time for me. Everything's quiet. I'm able to cry. I'm able to tell him, hey, I have this fear. I'm scared of this. What do I do here? How do I handle this? Yeah. That's, my, that's the best time. And I do my exercise. So I just spend time with God. My whole morning, I spend time with God and my affirmations. What's your importance of routine? What's what? Well, how important is routine in your life? How important? The, that's the biggest thing. It's it's a routine. That's the pillar. That's the pillar of everything. And I heard this uh, this podcast, or it was a YouTube. The, the the best thing you could do is start your routine, but start by doing your bed. Because you already accomplished one thing. Mm -hmm. When you accomplish one thing, your whole mindset changes. So there's been days I've missed my routine, like when I travel, right? And um, and I, I feel different. Like I feel like I failed at something. I, I need my routine. Yeah. That's... And if you study every successful person, bro, they have a routine. If you study every unsuccessful person, they have a routine. Common denominators. Exactly. That's right. That's right. I think if we if the message out of this podcast, man, is look at the denominators of everybody. Successful, not successful. Study them. Study them. Study really pay them. like just pay attention. Pay attention. A minute clip, a one hour podcast, it will give you information. But there's more to this. There's more to the story, exactly. right? There's there was a Dylan before this podcast. There was oh, yeah. a Dusko before this one. Exactly. There was an Ivan before the Buffalo spot, and and people need to understand that. Hey, why are we here now? There's a reason why we're here. First, we give it up to God, and and I've said it before, and and lately I have, man. Where it's like, hey, I'm not here because of me anymore. I'm here because He's allowing me to. And because my message isn't done, we had a, I want to say like two, three days ago, I didn't even tell you, but this guy just messaged me, bro. And he was like, what do I do? I'm done. I want to quit. I can't no more. I was like, hey, bro. He replied right away. I was like, hey, bro, it's okay. Take a breath. Tomorrow is going to be better, but you don't know how that's going to be if you don't get there. Take your time. It's okay. It's not a race. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. And, yeah, and powerful. Yeah, and, and you know, to get to that point where you get to help other people that is not you anymore. And, you know, we've we've had moments. It's 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 fine. We talked about this. We've had moments. That night those those voices in their head were way too loud. But then they got quiet and the, and it was okay the next day. Those are the days I'm thankful for because the days where the voices were way too loud in my head, God quieted them so I can listen to him and I can wake up the next day and, and keep on going. 
Again, how do you know what good times are if you don't get to the bad times? True. Exactly. You're grateful for those times. What I, I do want to ask, and I think this is perfect. What was one of your moments in your life where you were your lowest that no one knows about? That's a tough one, man. <laughs> it's going to make me cry. <laughs> no. Um, I think nobody knows this one, but um, I was sleeping in the restaurant a lot of the time, right? So, uh, yeah. I don't know if I could do this, bro. Hell yeah, you can, bro, because it's a safe space. You're around people that love you and care about you. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, I was sleeping in the restaurant because I didn't have enough money. See, I lived in San Diego, so I opened the restaurant in Long Beach, and my, my kid was born at that time so i i didn't have enough money to to um to drive back right at that time so i would sleep in the restaurant and the times that i did decide to drive back not have enough money i would just drive back to see my kid sleep and those were the toughest times i had yeah just to see him sleep What do you remember from that? Oh, it was tough, bro. I mean, it was. It felt like failure. It felt like, uh, like I had no power, no control over it, right? So, yeah, it was really hard. How did it make you feel? Well, I felt lost, bro. I felt lost. I couldn't provide for my family. I couldn't be there for them, and then I didn't have enough. I I didn't want to show my wife what I was going through, because she didn't know what I was going through. Like, I, I'm that type of a man, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I didn't want her to worry. I didn't want her to, que me diga, ya viste, you shouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? So that was the hardest time. You're going through, I was going through depression, going through anxiety, about to fail the second restaurant, and telling her everything's okay. And I would drive from San Diego, I mean, from L.A., Long Beach, two hours back to see my little kid just sleep and then driving back up at five in the morning because I had to go to Restaurant Depot and uh, and start cooking. So for months, my little kid didn't really see me. Right. How do you get through this? How do you get to the lowest moment in your life um, and get to a happier moment in a sense? God. Spend so much time with them, I still do. I would drive and be crying, like, hey, senor, sacame de esta, help me out with this one. Um, but it was that, and then just determination that I was going to make it happen no matter what. Against all obstacles, which I had a lot, and I still have some, right? Yeah. It's a different level. But back then, it was really hard for me. Um, like we said earlier, this is a, um, everything that's on the internet right now yeah. is a journal of what is going to be later for our kids, you know? Something that you would like to tell your kid right now that at son. that exact moment. Yeah. Um, Papa está aquí. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got you guys. You know, Santiago at that time was a couple of months, and he still don't. Know, he's obviously gonna. He's obviously <laughs> gonna know now. Mm. Yeah. But um, never quit, right? And Dad is gonna. So Papa's gonna be here no matter. God has our back. That's it. It's powerful. Yeah. And you're creating that space for your son, your family, your wife, people that follow you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be down. Again, it's a power, bro, to be vulnerable. Oh, hell yeah. But it, not it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to feel down and, and it's okay to reminisce on moments that were the toughest and lowest. Mm -hmm. But do your part and help. Because you don't know how many other people are with are waiting to hear this answer, and how many people made the rest in paradise were always waiting for it and never got it. 
right? Like, um, Dylan will not let me lie on this one. We were literally in the gym sauna, 8 p.m. Me and him were not even talking because we were just stressing. When you work with, <laughs> with, with your friends and best friends, like, you have moments you don't want to talk to these motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> because you're just whatever whatever differences, right? Yeah. And that was one of those one of those days where me and him were just not really communicating. And then we're in the sauna. And then this is how crazy life is, man. The person next to us, the girl, received their call oh, God. that her boyfriend just committed suicide. That's crazy, bro. And me and him are not even talking. Me and him are here in the gym. We're dwelling on other shit. And she's getting a call that now they're blaming her. Because yeah. of you, this happened to you. She's just there crying like. That's not and she leaves and me and him just start crying. And like after and that weekend we shouted him out because, hey, if you're fighting to something, hey, it's going to be okay, dog. Like. Keep going. It it hit and it hit personal. Yeah, I mean, I've 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 tried it before. Yeah, I've I've done I've done it before. I've tried it before. For the power of God, I'm I'm still here. For the purpose of God, I'm still here. So it hit it hit different listening to that, and I'm like, what if my mom would have got that call? Yeah, that's right. And it's just like it hit it hit different, and then we just went to the locker rooms, and we're just Damn. we were quiet the whole time, just. just Tearing yeah. up because I'm just like I was thinking about my parents, my sister, my brothers, and what if he just got that call all of a sudden? You know, your your homeboy, your business partner just committed suicide. You know, it yeah. just it, it hits different. It hits at a different level. Yeah, it definitely does. Bro. Yeah, because I mean I do want to just sound like again we tell when we shoot a podcast we we reminisce on even what happened a week ago. Right. It's right. this is our journal, right? And when we were out the uh, other day in the brewery with with everybody. I mean, one of those things that really just dwelled on me and hit me was I was there with one of one of my best friends from man, years ago already, and me and him lost one of our best friends to suicide. And then he's doing he's doing great right now. And one thing that we did tell each other was, fuck, I wish he was here to see this now. And then... We're just reminiscing of this whole thing, right? And a lot of people, if they haven't heard this, they don't know this. Why do I continue in this type of podcast, this type of industry, talking about mental health and mm -hmm. and all this? It's because the one person I felt like I, I could have saved, and I couldn't. And I lost my best friend to suicide. So it's a chip on my shoulder. Like, I couldn't save you, brother. Right. But I'm here to help out somebody else that's in that edge. And um, just sucks. But How do you live with that right now? Fuck, that shit hurts. Yeah, I would. I would. I wish I was able to help him go through whatever demons he was going through. And uh, I just know my gift and my purpose is help out the others that are struggling with that. That's why I replied to this guy not too long ago. That's why we keep on putting videos every, every day because the video we posted today, Dylan said it. I hope you win the battle no one knows about. Mm -hmm. I love it, bro. Because no one, you don't need to tell anybody, but I hope you win it because you're the one that needs to go through it. And, um, damn, bro. That's a tough one, man. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a, it's a tough pill, yeah. And um, one of our our last breaks. If you're still in this podcast, man, we appreciate you guys. Thank you for tapping in. Thank you for subscribing, following, and listening to the message that needs to be put it out and needed and that you needed to hear. I feel like you don't run into a message until you need to hear it. You know, everybody talks about man, IG just knows what I'm thinking. No, motherfucker, you just needed to hear that shit. <laughs> yeah, you just needed to see that shit. Oh, I don't know if I should buy this clothes, and then boom, <laughs> all this shit of clothes just pops in your feed. Yeah. Um, one of the things, and that's why I said right now, I didn't want to ask you, or didn't want to tell you what we asked before. There's two questions, and the first first one I do want to ask: not having your father around. How did it affect your life? 
in a positive and negative way. So, obviously, as you can see, it affected me in a, in a positive way, right? But I, like I told you, I think it would have helped me out a lot to have that fa father figure throughout my life. Mm -hmm. But then again, I'm so grateful for what I went through. I'm so grateful that it was only my mom at one point. Um, and I, I don't think I would change anything about it. I think um, we're, we're, I'm cool where I'm at. I think I needed that so I could uh, deliver a message to others that it's doable and I could be a better father to my kids. Is there something that not having your father around is how do you view fatherhood now then? Towards my kids? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I, I would never leave my kids unless God takes me from here, right? But even if my marriage was not to work out, I'm always going to be there for my kids. That's a decision I've made. I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made with yeah. us. And, and I take that to heart. That's why, I, that's why I'm very careful on not cheating on my wife. I mean, I could fail her at any time, right? We're men. But I... I, 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 I try to put myself, not put myself in situations that that's going to happen in, right? Because I want to be there for my kids. Yeah. So to me, it's, uh, I'm doing things way different. I'm breaking those uh, caden cadenas generacionales, you know, the generational curses. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my kids to go through that. I don't want them to grow without a father. You need a father figure at the end of the day. True. Luckily, um, uh, God gave me a whole different path, and I was able to get out of that type of a life. But most kids aren't. Most kids end up staying there or end up in jail. And that's how the system has you, right? Now they have both parents working, the kid by himself at home. Now the system, the school system educating them. And then from the school system, the correctional system educates them. So it, it is what it is. I feel that's kind of where they want us, right? So I want to change that game for my family, my, my future generations. I'm the first millionaire in my family. So now the, the rest of my generations have no excuse. They better become billionaires. It's like uh, how Shaq said, if I was able to do it, my kids need to come even better. Exactly. Because exactly. we, we talked about it before. Mm -hmm. Our parents come and they thrive to give us a better life. And if we don't succeed in that, then what did we do? Exactly. Why, how are we going to show face to our parents when we're adults and be like, damn. Exactly. No, pues, no lo voy a hacer porque no, no se puede. Yeah. Uh, no one gave me the opportunity. No one gave me the chance. Like you, you take it personal. Yeah. Like I, I'm a, my mom crossed the border when she was pregnant with my sister. Um, a week after or two weeks after, my dad crossed the freaking border by himself, and it's just like if they were able to do that for me, for me to be here, like it would be kind of disrespectful if I don't get somewhere in life with what they have given me. You know. One hundred. Exactly. So it's just like I, I take it very, very personal. And my, I think you you can agree to this. No one owes you anything. No one owes you an opportunity. No one owes you a chance. No one owes you a hand to lend out. Either you go and get it, or it, you're not going to get it at all. Mm -hmm. like you'll have people that help you out. There's people along the way that help us out. We don't get here all alone. There's people that help us out. But if you're not willing to do the work yourself, no, no, nothing I, is handed. Everything is earned, bro. I have a I have a very uh, hard hard um, understanding uh, the the way we do things nowadays, right? Everybody feels entitled, at mm -hmm. least here, right? But when you grow up in a third world country, or you see other places, like you just mentioned, your your parents crossed that border, right? Um, how can you take what we have here in this country for granted? What we have, you know, all we hear is like people don't want to work, people this. And just get up and do your thing, and yeah. everything will be all right. They want to be paid as a millionaire, yeah. but have a they don't have a work ethic of yeah. someone that just works for pennies. Exactly. And the people don't understand that. And I love traveling to Mexico, yeah. just like anybody. You can spend like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. But what about that guy that's about to wash your windows for ten pesos, twenty pesos? I'm gonna give him a hundred pesos. You know how much that hundred pesos is out there? And that's how much you're going to give them? Crazy. That's how much they're working for for a day or maybe even a week? Yeah. It's crazy. So, again, take advantage and be grateful of where you're at. The question, hopefully this one fucks you up again, but here we go. I got one more. To, <laughs> if that one doesn't fuck them up, well, I'll fuck them <laughs> You'll up. fuck them up? Oh, All right. Oh, we got to <laughs> We gotta just, we gotta do this. Let's go. Can you blame your parents for your bad acknowledgement of mental health? 
No, I cannot blame my parents for that. They, my mom tried her best, and uh, my grandparents, I mean, they taught us the right way. You know, I decided, I'm, we all make decisions in life at the end of the day. I decided to to hang out with the wrong people at the end of the day. I, make, I decided to make certain decisions that put me in those situations. Yeah, I was a kid, but those were the ca- cards that were handed to us. Mm. We were dealt those cards, and it is what it is. But there's worse situations, right? You hear uh, worse cases like Oprah Winfrey, all these guys, they went through some crazy stuff too. You know, so I don't have an excuse, man. I mean, that's what happens now. People just find excuses and blame others for their issues, and that's not the route to go. So I take, I take, I'm fully accountable for my decisions. Um, my, my mom didn't, didn't instill for me to be a drug dealer. She didn't instill for me to drop out of school. Al revés. She was like, go to school. Hey, leave those friends. Why are you hanging out with these people? Son malas influencias, you know? So they were doing their part as they could, right? And I, I can't blame them for that. I take full responsibility for my decisions. Okay, so now what? What do you have, brother? To uh, kind of piggyback on what he said, let's say your mom wasn't the other side of this camera. And not to take away from what you're going to tell your mom next week. Yeah. What would you love to tell your mom right now? I would tell my mom that she is my superhero at the end of the day. That she did everything that she needed to do with, with what she had, and and we don't blame her for nothing. Because you could tell that they they feel that blame, right, of how mm-hmm. they educated us or, you know, at the end of the day. But I feel that uh, she needs to understand that whatever we went through, it's okay. It's part of God's plan. That's it. It's all said and done. You know, you know, it's like... Um, I made it, mama. That's it. I got you now. From moving forward, I got you now. That's that's. I love that. I love it, yeah. man. That that's yeah. a that's something to be so proud of. And um, I mean, I, we always love ending on, on cool. on quotes, man. And you are, one of the dudes that you're getting into your light now, because you're posting. You're letting people see, who Ivan is. You're allowing people to see the greatness of, of yourself. And we had the pleasure for the last two hours to see this. But for the people watching and listening, looking for an answer in, in life, what's the best piece of advice you can give them if they're hearing you right now? The best piece of advice that I could give anybody is uh, stay loyal to your values. Okay, Work hard. Have a lot of faith and never give up. Go beer or go home. Damn. Hell that. yeah. I love that shit, bro. Dylan, did you have one today? Um, I did. And I'm going to quote um, Richard Villa from two weeks ago. Yes, sir. Um, I'm kind of putting my perspective, but at the end of it, kind of like put it his way. But it would be, it would be to, it's, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to not feel vulnerable, but to ask for help. Because, like he said, closed mouths don't get fed, you know? So if you don't ever ask for help, no one's going to know what you're going through, and no one's going to ever try to help you out because you never communicate. So That's right. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. That'll be it. I mean, again, this was another great episode, a great podcast. And honestly, the only thing I feel like I can leave anybody still listening is trust God's plan. Trust the power above. If your journey looks a little bit dark, it's a little bit foggy, it's okay. Keep going and you're going to go to get get to the clear vision. Trust yourself, believe in yourself. And if it gets lonely, then that's the way it was meant to be. That's right. Ivan, honestly, thank you so much for allowing us to. I appreciate you guys taking the time and it was definitely our pleasure to have you guys here. Yeah, it was. It needed to happen the when it needed to happen. Exactly. We talked about off camera when when we our social medias ran into each other, yeah. and it's just it's part of the plan. That's right. It's part of the plan. Now we're here to share this story, and anybody that is still listening and hearing, hopefully it helps them in, in the most positive way, and you know leave your comment, subscribe. Go eat at the restaurants that are bomb. If you haven't ate there, go. <laughs> you're missing out. I'm telling you. And it's not promotion or anything. You're missing out. Like, you really are. It, it really is. But honestly, Ivan, thank you so much. 
Everybody watching Toast Life Podcast. Yes, Most authentic. We do not miss a fucking Monday. We don't. Don't ever miss a Monday. Make no excuses to what your job is. No matter how drunk you are, no matter how long the weekend was, <laughs> no matter if there was... Why are you a, looking at me, bro? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> no matter if there was a holiday, you make sure you show up. And if your word is your bond. Exactly. Uh, your word is your bond. And if you break that, how I even said earlier, then <laughs> what aren't you willing to break? Exactly. Let's go, baby. I was gonna say, no, if you, I was gonna say, if you cheat on someone, you, you'll <laughs> oh, cheat no, again. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, yo.